Welcome to our 10-minute Shalom Learning Center Lectorium, where we focus our attention on history of Judaism as an instrument to understand the uh, New Testament. And we are now in the period of 1st uh, century BC, 1st century AD. That's the times of Jesus. And uh, this is what we have um, in this period, the development of rabbinic system of education. Jesus encounters different Pharisees all the time uh, because uh, during the time of Jesus we have uh, two major Pharisaic schools um, Beit Shammai and Beit Hillel Shammai and Hillel were uh, one of the founding fathers of the uh, Pharisees uh, of course uh, we know about uh, uh, some of them before Shammai and Hillel, uh, uh, the first uh, known uh, uh, teacher and rabbi uh, was uh, Simeon the Righteous, uh, who was a member of Sanhedrin, uh, probably during the reign of Alexander Yanai, and then uh, there were others uh, after him, uh, uh, the Shemaya and Aftalionis, they were the teachers of Shammai and Hillel. Uh, and so, but it's Shammai and Hillel who basically shape uh, the Pharisaic thought. And they're a little bit different. Uh, in fact, uh, in rabbinic Judaism, uh, we have a certain uh, plurality of opinion, uh, and that's very important. Uh, rabbinic documents preserve the opinions of Shammai and the opinions of Hillel on different issues. Uh, for example, uh, we have uh, Shammai who teaches that the man must not divorce his wife unless she has committed adultery. It is very interesting because this opinion uh, basically concurs with the opinion of Jesus expressed in the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, also, uh, uh, Hillel, on the contrary, believes that the man can divorce his wife even if she spoiled his soup. And Rabbi Akiva, which is of course later, uh, he believes that a man can divorce his wife uh, when he found somebody more pretty than his wife. Uh, so there is a variety of opinion, uh, and uh, I can give uh, more examples. For example, uh, not every time Jesus uh, would agree with uh, Shammai. Um, take, for example, the matter of conversion. Uh, a, uh, a, a Gentile found Shammai and asked him to teach him Torah while he stands on one of his feet. And Shammai got angry and chased him with a shovel. Uh, where as Hillel converted him. And what did Hillel say? Hillel said, do not do to others as you don't want to wish, uh, you don't wish to be done to yourself. This is the entire Torah. The rest is the commentary. Go and study the Torah. Uh, basically, what Shammai meant by chasing this Gentile with the shovel, um, he was upset that this man expected to become a Jew so easy. How can I teach you the Torah while you stand on one foot and uh, expect you to become one of us? It's not possible. No, no, no. You got to come to my synagogue 
learn the Torah and uh, spend some time, uh, uh, years, uh, and then I will watch you and see if you deserve it. With Hillel, basically, if you agree with the key principles of the Torah, welcome to Judaism. But this is not the end of it. Go and study the Torah because it's the constant process. As you can see here, Christ Jesus and especially his disciples are more toward the side of Hillel uh, because when we read the book of Acts chapter uh, 15, the letter that was written to the Gentiles, how they are to be accepted into the uh, newly uh, organized uh, congregations of Judea Christians uh, was basically uh, stating four basic principles and then it was said for the Torah is taught every Shabbat. So basically uh, you see a certain diversity within the Pharisaic uh, movement. And uh, very often uh, there is a discussion between Jesus and the Pharisees uh, on different subjects. One of the subjects was whether or not he could heal on Shabbat. The issue of medical assistance on Shabbat uh, is very, very serious. Uh, when we read later in the Talmud, we discover that rabbis of the 3rd, 4th century AD uh, came to realization that the saving life uh, the necessity to save life overrides Shabbat. So, at the time of the first century, if we could see and trace the development, this was a hot topic at, and there was no conclusions reached. So, Jesus was uh, involved in this debate because Pharisees would ask his opinion, and uh, some of them disagreed with him. But not all the time Pharisees disagreed with Jesus. On the other occasion, uh, as it's recorded in the uh, uh, book of Mark, the Gospel of Mark, uh, a lawyer asked Jesus, what is the greatest commandment in the Torah? And Jesus replies, with the famous uh, and most important uh, statement in the life of a Jew, Shema Israel Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Ehad. Uh, Hear Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. This is Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4. And then the commandment, Thou shalt love your Lord, your God, with all your heart, with all your might, with all your soul. This is the greatest commandment. And then the second, Jesus says, uh, love your neighbor as yourself. And the Pharisee replies, well said, teacher. Loving your neighbor is greater and more important than the sacrifices. This wasn't the only case when Jesus was asked about the most important commandment in the Torah. In the book of Luke, we have a different case when, again, a lawyer asked Jesus uh, how to uh, inherit eternal life, uh, Olam Haba, the world to come. And Jesus asks him, uh, what is written in the Torah? And the man answers, love your Lord God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might, 
and love your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus replies to him, if you do like this, you will inherit eternal life. So, as you can see, many, many scholars today looking at the teaching of Jesus, comparing the teaching of Jesus with the rabbinic teachings of his time, begin to realize that Jesus was a Pharisee in his teaching. His school was a sort of a competitor to the other Pharisaic schools. The only thing which Jesus didn't do, as uh, we mentioned before, he did not teach either lawyers or scribes because his goal was to teach only teachers who will acquire as many disciples as possible to change the world.